Today, I'm diving into my week-long experience using the base model M4 Mac Mini. That's right, the $599 version of the M4 Mac Mini as my only computer for video editing in DaVinci Resolve Studio over the past week. Now, I use a wide variety of cameras for my work. When it's YouTube, I primarily use the Blackmagic Cinema Camera 6K that we're filming on right now. I use the Sony FX30, which the FX30, the FX3, the A7 S3, those are the cameras that most tech YouTubers and a lot of YouTubers in general are using and kind of basing their experiences off of. There's obviously some other cameras like Canon cameras, whatnot, but these cameras have the most common codec being used. And then there's some of the cameras I use in my much higher end work like the Red Komodo that shoot 6K like the Blackmagic but with a different codec. And codecs are going to be the theme of today's discussion because that's something that kind of gets left out in some of the tech reviews that I see on YouTube because these guys are more reviewing it from a different perspective than I am. I'm a filmmaker, content creator, and DP that shoots with a wide variety of cameras with completely different codecs. Now I'm just going to break it down to you. Something that a lot of the tech reviewers are leaving out is the fact that in 2020, Apple added hardware encoders to all their computers, starting with the M1 Apple Silicon machines. They even added it to my 5K iMac. And that hardware encoder lets you edit what's called H.265 footage a lot easier on their computers without having to rely exclusively on the graphics card. Now, H.265 footage, which most of the cameras like the FX30, FX3, the Canon cameras, the Osmo Pocket, action cameras, drones, so you can imagine a lot of cameras use that codec now because you get the maximum amount of quality for the smallest file size. Makes a lot of sense. A lot of cameras are using that unless you're filming on cinema cameras or shooting for high-end productions and maybe using different codecs than H.265. The first thing you'll notice is just how small this thing is. The M4 Mac Mini is tiny. It practically feels like you could fit a dozen of these inside my iMac's old frame. The M4 Mac Mini comes with Thunderbolt 4 ports, which I rely exclusively on for my editing equipment. I typically need three to four Thunderbolt ports, but since the Mac Mini only has three, I use an OWC Thunderbolt hub. With this hub, I connect my monitor, two Thunderbolt 4 SSDs, leaving two additional Thunderbolt 4 ports on my Mac Mini, plus I have two USB-C ports in the front available for any extras, making this setup flexible and efficient. One thing to note is the Mac Mini base model only comes with 256 gigs of storage. This means external storage is going to be absolutely necessary in order to handle large video files. I'm using two Thunderbolt SSDs to store all of my raw footage. One is Thunderbolt 3 and it's about half the speed of my hard drive where one is Thunderbolt 4 and it pretty much matches the internal hard drive of the Mac Mini as far as speed. By using external drives, you're freeing up the small internal hard drive of the Mac Mini to run apps, programs, operating system tasks, just leave it open for the computer to run, and this thing will run really smooth. But of course, you're spending $599, so there's going to be some compromises. Now, speaking of external monitors, yeah, I'm using two external monitors on this Mac Mini. I'm using one Thunderbolt external monitor, and I'm using actually one monitor that's really a TV, and I'm grabbing the signal out of the HD HDMI jack. Now, you are going to need external monitors with this Mac Mini, which is obviously going to drive the price up. So some of you may ask, well, why don't I just go get the MacBook Air when it comes out? It really depends on what your situation is, because if you already own monitors and you don't need higher resolution monitors like 4K, 8K, whatever it may be, then you can use your existing monitors with the Mac Mini and not have to spend any more. And again, for $599, you're getting a really powerful computer. With the older MacBook Airs like the M1, the M2, and the inevitable M4 that we're going to see come out soon, I'm betting that the base model of that computer is not going to be as powerful as the Mac Mini because when you look at the M4 iMac, that computer has 8 CPU cores and 8 GPU cores compared to the 10 CPU cores and 10 GPU cores that are in the Mac Mini. So you're going to get better performance out of the M4 Mac Mini than something like the base model M4 iMac or inevitably when it comes out the base model M4 MacBook Air. But if you need to be as portable as possible but you need a built-in screen, this obviously won't replace the MacBook Air because 
I loved the MacBook Air just because of how small it was and also the power draw. That thing only took 30 watts, so I could use really small power adapters and bring them with me and power the M1 MacBook Air when I had that for three years off of those really small power devices. It was really cool to do that, but I've moved on and my power requirements are a little bit higher now. Now let's talk about the RAM. Apple has added 16 gigs of RAM in these base model computers, which was needed. Reason being, although for years I have been telling everybody and many others that you could make eight gigabytes work on the older M1, M2 computers. The issue was if you were a video editor, you were pretty much always using swap memory at that point. If you're gonna be using swap memory all the time, you're going to decrease the overall life of your hard drive in those computers. And the problem is the hard drives were soldered in so once those computers die, I don't know if the cost to fix them at that point would have really been worth continuing to use them if you were really heavily using those computers. Now, I use the M1 MacBook Air as a travel computer. So for me, it wasn't really a huge deal because when I pushed it to its limits, I wasn't doing that on a daily basis. But for someone who was on a heavy budget, they may have been doing that on a daily basis. And instead of getting, you know, six, seven years out of their computer, which I see pretty much all M4 Mac minis will get that, you may not be getting that. You may be getting on an M1 MacBook Air, an M2 MacBook Air. You may be getting three years of life out of those computers if you're lucky, if you were pushing those computers to its limit with the eight gigabytes of RAM on the base model. And then on top of that, with eight gigabytes of RAM, you had to memory manage somewhat. So for me, when I was using DaVinci Resolve, I pretty much was only using DaVinci Resolve. I didn't have any other tabs open. And even at that point, I was still using swap memory where on the 16 gig models, you really don't have to manage your memory quite as much. And I say quite as much because it depends how heavy of a user you are, not on the editing side, but how many tabs you like open. So if you're, let's say, editing in DaVinci Resolve with the 16 gigabytes of RAM, and you also have 10 Chrome apps open, you're probably gonna go over your 16 gigabytes of RAM just because Chrome is heavy in its usage for every single tab you have open. So if you're someone who just doesn't want to memory manage whatsoever and you're, that's your use case, and that's your use case, then you have to remember 16 gigs may still not be enough for you. But if you're only going to have maybe one tab open in Chrome or one tab open in Safari, Firefox, whatever it may be, or you're not going to have any tabs open whatsoever, the 16 gigs is going to be more than enough in this computer. I have 18 gigs on my M3 Pro MacBook Pro, and I have not had to memory manage once. But again, I'm not the type of user that has, you know, 10 tabs open in Chrome. If I have Chrome open, it's pretty much just one tab. If you're a video editor who's looking to edit in DaVinci Resolve or a similar program on the Mac Mini, minus Premiere, because Adobe Premiere uses a lot more RAM than both DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut X. If you're editing YouTube videos, podcasts, real estate, light client work, the M4 Mac Mini is gonna be fine for you. You're not really gonna have any problems with it. As I said, the M1 MacBook Air really didn't have many problems other than I do want to mention that when I used that computer, I was always editing on a 720 timeline where on the M4 Mac Mini, I'm editing on a 1080p timeline and then I change it to 4K when I'm ready to export and I'm still having no issues. But if you're the type of editor that maybe you're working on feature films or you're doing TV shows or you just have a lot of effects, as I mentioned earlier, well, that's where this thing's gonna slow down a little bit in the playback because the more effects you use or if you use a lot of noise reduction in your footage, those are gonna slow down the playback process no matter what. And so you're using a $599 base model computer. You can't expect the world out of it. And so that's gonna be one of the major limitations with editing. Now, I light almost everything and when I'm outdoors, if it's not lit, I try to just make sure that my lighting is good. I mostly film my vlogs during the day, so I'm not really using noise reduction and I'm not really using a lot of effects. So for me, it hasn't impacted me at all. Even these studio shots, I'm not using any noise reduction. I'm lighting myself, I'm shooting at ISO 400 on my camera, I'm not in a low light situation. So noise reduction really isn't a factor in this. But if you're an editor that relies on GPU intensive tasks, like I mentioned before, with the noise reduction, with the effects, or you're someone who needs to export a project as fast as possible, that's gonna be where something like the M4 Pro Mac Mini is going to do you a lot more favors because the big thing I've seen is the export times, the rendering times are just so much faster on those machines compared to the base model that 
if you're in that situation, you shouldn't be looking at the base model. You should be looking at a more expensive computer because you are going to get those benefits out of it. But I think a lot of you who are looking at the $599 price tag of the base model Mac Mini, I don't think that's really going to be an issue for you. It may be that you can afford to wait the longer render times, or you may be editing videos that aren't quite as long or using footage from cameras like the FX30, FX3 that aren't quite GPU hogs like maybe the R3D would be and you can absolutely put up with that. And then of course there is the other thing to remember that the CPU advantages from the M4 Mac Mini compared to the M4 Pro, the M4 Max, although they are more powerful in the CPU department, they're not much more powerful. So you're not going to see a huge boost in that department. It's really just anything that is intensive with the GPU. Now I'm going to skip over video gaming. A lot of people talk about it. Honestly, the only Macs I've ever video gamed on were the Intel Macs that you were allowed to do boot camp. You can't use boot camp anymore, which means you can't really do the majority of video games on these computers. You can only do some crazy stuff like using Wine or Parallels. And for me, that's not really in my wheelhouse. That's why I still have my 5K iMac. So I'm just going to completely skip over gaming. To me, you're not buying a Mac to video game. Between being able to use external hard drives via Thunderbolt 4 and being able to use existing accessories if you already own them, you can just save a buttload of money with this computer. So lastly, I want to talk about use cases that go beyond the everyday editor or content creator that could use the M4 Mac Mini. So back in 2021, I worked for a really big real estate influencer named Grant Cardone out of Miami. And in his offices, we all used iMac Pros. They were a little bit behind the time, but they invested so much when they bought them that even at the time, they were able to handle a lot of the footage we were using. We were filming mostly on Sony FX3 cameras, and those iMac Pros handled all the footage really well. But the reason I bring that up is there were like seven of us at his office. And if you are looking to build a videography crew or a video editor crew, and you're starting on a budget, I think buying a fleet of M4 Mac Minis is a really great way to get a bunch of computers that are capable of fully editing videos for your staff and do so without breaking the bank. You know, you could buy four of these for the price of a spec'd out M4 Pro Mac Mini or an M2 Mac Studio. You can get a lot of value for these, especially because most of the people who are in the situation like a Grant Cardone or a content creator, again, they're making content for YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. There aren't that many effects. There's a lot of text in those videos, but these computers can handle that. If you have that many editors on your team and you're just starting out, maybe you're just starting your YouTube channel and you're trying to make a big push, I think these are going to be a huge tool for those kinds of creators. Now, it's not the everyday use. I totally get that. I'm speaking to a really small minority of content creators out there. But ever since I worked at Grant Cardone, I've had a lot of realtors reach out to me who have hired video editors full-time on staff, and they've always been wondering, oh, what computer can I get that's not going to break the bank, that I can get these guys started and work from my office, and I could work with them, see what they're doing? M4 Mac Mini is totally the way to go. So after a week of using this M4 Mac Mini, I can confidently say that it is a fantastic computer for video editing, whether you're on a tight budget or you're just trying to add an extra computer to your arsenal that can handle video editing. Like I said, can handle the red Komodo of all things. This is a fantastic computer that's gonna save you space and budget. So if you have any questions about the M4 Mac Mini, let me know in the comments below. And if you got knowledge and value out of today's video, please make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell to keep up to date with the latest videos from the channel. And until next time, my name's Jeff Fagan. Thank you for joining me as always, and I'll catch you in the next video.